Okay, we're recording. All right, sweet. <clears throat> Hi, I'm Mike, and this is an intro. So what we got here is Damia Sage of Stone for a moderate budget. Ooh, hey, you've got to stay focused this time. Nice. But yeah, what we have here is a bug deck, specifically blue, green, and black, that, well, it does some pretty scary things, mostly revolving around the graveyard mechanic. Damia, of course, in this deck, she's here specifically to help fill up your hand if you stall out. Ideally, you would never actually need her, but if you ever really get screwed over and you really need something, she'll help fill up your hand again, which makes her the perfect general for this. And, like I said, this is on a moderate budget, so everything in this deck with... Okay, Jenga Taxes, he's in this deck. He's a little more than ten... Okay, he's a little more than five dollars, so... Other than him, and anything that's changed radically since I bought it, <clears throat> other than that, this is a moderate budget deck, everything's $5 or under, a lot of cards are actually really cheap for this deck, and work even better for that reason. So, without a doubt, let's get into it. This is Damia, Sage of Stone. The first group of cards are the cards that just, you know, they help out. Such as Lightning Greaves, Haste, Shroud... Zombie Infestation. Dump cards from your hand into your graveyard and get a 2-2 black zombie for it. So, you get things in the graveyard, which is a very important fact for this deck, from your hand, which is surprisingly enough usually dead space, and gives you blockers, which can save your life. Life, points, whatever. Reassembling Skeleton. Because having a cheap guy who you can drop out to act as a blocker and get back after you sack him repeatedly is not bad, especially because there's a lot of sack mechanics in this deck. Eternal Witness or E-Witness. Because if you drop something in your graveyard you really want to use again, she'll get it back. Doomgape. I don't have much life gain in this deck, but he's in there, mostly because things dying in this deck is good. I have so many ways to get him back. This is This deck is graveyard mechanics, just abusing that to the highest extent. He puts things into the graveyard from the field. Chances are I'll get it back in the turn I uh, let it die, and I'll get some life out of it. Which is useful. Too bad, and, you know, he's a trampling 10-10. Nothing to, you know, laugh at there. Then comes Kagemaru, first to suffer. I mostly have him in here because, based on my hand size, he can either be huge, which should have never happened if my deck's running well, or he can help me wipe the board. And against this deck... Wiping the board, sure it'll kill my stuff and him, but it'll kill my enemies. That's more important because I can get my stuff back. And Zadak, Lord of Secrets. He's not quite a graveyard card here, but he puts things in other people's graveyards, which I can really take advantage of. Because, like I said, this deck takes advantage of graveyard mechanics. Not just my own. And, you know, he gets bigger, so get him to hit someone enough times, and they might just mill themselves out. Or I mill them out, and they just die. But, yeah. The next group of cards are the straight utility cards. Dreamscape Artist. It's basically horror and blue on a creature. Which is a weird concept, I know, but it's from Planner Chaos, so that kind of makes sense. It was a weird set. Which, which is probably why it's one of my favorites. Basically, though, I can horror... I sack a land, get two, untapped, and to do this, I have to discard a card, which is actually even more useful, because I want things to discard. I want my good creatures in the graveyard. Sakura Tribe Elder. Most people, okay, I like to call him Sack Tribe Elder, because you get him out for two, you sack him, you get a land tapped. He's a rampant growth that's a creature. So you can also get him back later with some of the reanimate card, uh, cards. This card. This is Rampant Growth on a Creature without Sack. Basically, it's Pay 2, Tap, Discard a Card, Rampant Growth. But it's a 2-drop for a 1-1 one, one blocker, if nothing else. And it'll let me put things I don't want from my hand into my graveyard, which could be more useful. Also, Mercadia Masks. It's a good card, especially for sort of fun. Cultivate. I know, I know. Straightforward card. Pay 3, get 2. 1 to your hand, 1 on the field tapped. Useful, and lets you search up your mana base. Journey of Discovery. Early game, get the two cards you need for the colors to fix it up. Late game, if I have six mana already, just get two more down, easy. Haro. Uh, 
yeah, you should know this one by now. And if you don't, get a copy, please. Please. It's awesome. Search for tomorrow. Pay three, get a card, specifically a, a land card, basic land card, from your library to the field, untapped. But I can suspend it, so it comes out on the first turn if I want. Two turns later, it'll cast itself. Useful. If I'm mana screwed. Which... Not likely in this deck, because there's a lot of search, like you saw. But crazier things have happened. Okay, next up we have the cards that start to get more into the mechanic itself. These are the ones that either put things in the graveyard, or, well, they actually mostly just put things in the graveyard or take a massive advantage of things in there. But not going to break anything yet. First up, a classic. Go for the throat. Destroy target non-artifact creature. Yeah, get rid of threat. Love the card. Putrefy. Destroy target artifact or creature. It can't be regenerated. Again, get rid of threat. And considering artifacts or creatures that are artifacts, that can really take advantage of the, what go for the throat can't kill. Lotless Troll. I mostly just like this guy because he's a really cheap guy, I can regenerate him, and he lets me put cards from my hand in the graveyard so that I can reanimate later. That and, you know, his counters stick around. So he can become a threat, given enough. But really, he's mostly there to get things in the graveyard. Fenax, God of Deception. I'm actually not sure how much he costs. I got him for about $4, but I'm probably sure the price has variated by, or has changed a bit. So, yeah, he's probably still not that expensive, but you might want to check before you go in and buy him. Again, prices vary. By the time I say this, they will probably change before I even put it up on YouTube. So, it's worth checking. For what he does, though, if nothing else, he's an indestructible card. It's an enchantment. For what he does, though, I mean... <laughs> a 4-7 isn't anything to laugh at. But the fact that, even as an enchantment, he gives creatures you control tap. Target player puts the top X cards of his or her library into his or her graveyard. And that's all your creatures. Uh, there's a lot of creatures that get bigger based on graveyard size. Doing this a few times on a few creatures, th this, this, it's scary. Which is probably why I really want him in this deck. Necrotic Ooze. When somehow Fenix is in your graveyard and you still want those abilities, okay, he wouldn't actually get those. But everyone else, there's a lot of cards that would be really good, such as, oh, say... Hmm. This one? Or this one? They have abilities that you can trigger. Or specifically activate abilities. Not trigger. He gets them. Along with a few other things that are very, very useful. But basically, if you have to pay or tap, he can get it as long as it's in the graveyard. And it's not just your graveyard. So he can cover a lot of territory. Next up, we have the cards that really enable this deck. You have the basic cards, which are, you know, Diabolic Tutor, ah, hit the camera, Diabolic Collusion, and one of my personal favorites, Deceit the Queen. Diabolical Tutor, okay, pay for, search card, put into hand. Straightforward, and it works. Deceit the Queen. If I'm mana screwed, I can pay 6 to get it, or 3 black, and then I search for a card specifically with converted mana cost equal or less than the number of lands I have and put into play. I have to reveal with this one, so it's a little iffy if I want to make sure my opponents know. But if the card is necessary that turn, this is really worthwhile. And the card that really is awesome, Demonic Collusion. It's just like a $1 card, so it's not expensive, but it has buyback of this card to cards also. So not only do I put cards from my hand into the graveyard, which is really good with this deck, but I can get the card from my deck into my hand that can take advantage of it perfectly. There's not much bad about this deck because I can use it again. Or at least the card, I mean. Next up, we have Fierce Empath. Get one of the big bombs out of my deck that can really change the game. Put it into my hand. I'm sure, I have to reveal that everyone else is coming, but if it's worthwhile, it's worthwhile. Fauna Shaman. Yeah. Pay green, tap her, discard a creature card. Useful on its own, right? 
and search for another creature card, put it into my hand. For a two drop, who's also a two, two, she can really fix up the game quickly. And one of my personal favorites, Riptide Shapeshifter. He's a five drop, three, three. But his ability, pay two, or two colorless, two blue. Sacrifice him and then choose a creature type. I reveal cards from the top of my library until I reveal a creature card of that type. Yeah, there's the rest, you know, put them into uh, put that into play, shuffle your library, and along with the cards you revealed. But really, as long as I know there's only one of whatever creature type, and I know it's in the deck still, and not in my hand, graveyard, or exiled, I can choose which card I want, and he'll come out. Really, in any deck running blue, where you have a diverse uh, cast of types of creatures, he's useful. Especially in this deck, where I know there's a few cards who I just want out. And I have made a special point of only including that one creature type. And no changelings, because they would screw him up ter uh, terribly. But yeah, so useful. Next up, a little more search, but these are the cards that really interact with the graveyard heavily. Or set it up well. The card to link it all together is one of my favorites. I say it a lot, but I use a lot of cards I like. Green Sun Zenith. Green and X. Search your library for a green card of X converted man cost or less. Put it in the battlefield. Search, uh, uh, I can't speak today. Shuffle Green Sun Zenith back into your library. Last I checked, this was about $4. Might have gone up again, but I got it for $4, so I'll count it. If it's gone up, I would actually still suggest buying it, even if it's a little above a moderate budget, just because of how useful it is. You have a lot of green cards, and they all help you really fast. It's a great early game. It's a great late game. Really, when you play this, you search for the card that will, if not win, then put you in a very solid position. And it can usually do it. That is, you can use it again when you recycle it. Life from the Loam. Eh, really, this is if you have a land card in your graveyard for some reason that you want back, it'll get it. And it'll let you dredge. And it's a two-drop. It's just a solid card. I'm actually not sure how much this cost. I got it with the deck, and I haven't... Um, it could be more expensive, so if it's not, I apologize. And if you can get a copy for trade, great. If it's too much money, it won't break the deck. It's not that good. It's decent if you have it, but if you don't, you're not going to hurt yourself. Buried Alive. Probably a 50-cent card. Search your library for up to three creature cards and shuffle them, or, sorry, put them into your graveyard. Shuffle your library. This is a deck that has a lot of reanimation. It has a lot of graveyard mechanics. Putting the three cards that chances are are creatures that will win you the game into the graveyard is a really good way to win the game. I think that's worth it for three mana. Speaking of reanimation, how about a creature that does it? Phyrexian Delver. A five drop who's basically... Well, awesome. For nothing else, he's a 3-2. Not great, actually. But... He reanimates target creature card from your graveyard when it enters the battlefield. So if you flash it for some reason, if you run those mechanics, you can get something every turn, or whenever you use it. Sure, you lose life based on the card's for mana cost, but if you really want something back, you're okay with the loss. And this is EDH or Commander, so you start with 40 life. You probably have a little to spare. <coughs> Birthing Pod. Yeah, I know, I know, it's... Actually, I think it went down. It might not actually be under 5 now. So, yay. Ooh, cool. Good for me. Uh, but it sacrifice, uh, sacrifices the creature, so you get into the graveyard, and it searches for something with Kaferra Man cost one more than what you sacrificed, and puts it onto the field. So it searches your deck and gets something into your graveyard. Both are useful in this deck. That and, you know, Phyrexian Mana can really reduce its cost. Next up, Thought Gouger. I'm actually a little iffy on this card. Yeah, he's cheap, and he's not bad because he can get stronger quicker. <clears throat> but, the fact that he can quickly cycle through your library by, you know, making you discard your hand to get him into the field, which puts things into your graveyard, useful, again, and when he dies, which also isn't hard, you just uh, get as many cards back as you put plus one, plus one counters on him. So he can refill your hand. Demir Doppelganger. 
Exile target creature card from a graveyard. Demir Doppelgamer becomes a copy of that creature and gains this ability. For three, and then another three to activate the ability, anything that I put in my graveyard, I can now get a copy of. Sure, I have to exile it, but if it's enough to really help, it's enough to really help. Not bad for a three drop. Also, another card I'm not sure the price of. I got it through a, just a bulk trade. Not a bad one either, but yeah, probably not too much. This card, I know it's like a 25 cent card, but dear God, if you can get a copy of him, do it. He's one of the Kamigawa block flip cards, which weren't very popular, which is actually good because it makes him so much cheaper to buy, and he's amazing for what he does. He's a two drop that lets you, if nothing else, for two, colorless and a black, exile a card in target player's graveyard. Getting rid of someone else who has, you know, big cards in their graveyard that you don't want them to reanimate is useful, all on its own. The fact that when he uh, does that and there's no more cards in the player's graveyard, he flips, and you have pay five, reanimate. Uh, I don't really need to say much more. He is reanimation on a stick, quite literally. Lazov, Demir Mastermind. Yeah, he's actually under five. Who'd have thought? He's a 3-3 three, three for four with hexproof. Hexproof. I just... Yeah, he's really hard to get rid of. He keeps Hexproof, regardless of what he does, and whenever a creature card enters an opponent's graveyard, and say, oh yeah, opponent's graveyard, you can have him become a copy of that. It's a May ability, so it's not forced. And you can change it up later on when something else you want enters. So it's like, if you kill something you really, really don't like, you suddenly get a chance to gain something your opponent really, really won't like. And it keeps Hexproof. Dread Return. I know, it's a staple of reanimation decks. And it's allowed in Commander and EDH, which are the same thing. So yeah, four drop, reanimate. Or sack three creatures and flash it back to reanimate. Useful. Chainer. Five drop, three three. All nightmares get plus one plus one. Pay three, pay three life. Reanimate. Now, it comes in as a nightmare, and when he dies, or is exiled, or shuffled in, or returned to your hand, or just removed from battlefield anyway, you have to exile those creatures, but you can reanimate from anyone's field, or anyone's graveyard, for three. That's not bad, and since he doesn't tap, you can do it a lot, if you have the mana. Consuming Aberration. I like this card. Oh. He gets bigger based on opponent's graveyard. And, whenever you cast a spell, they mill until they hit a land. So he mills your opponents every time you do something. He reduces their options. And he gets bigger so you can hit them. God, pair this with uh, the one god I showed you. Tap, mill. He gets bigger, next time you do it, it's, it gets exponential. I don't think you win a game because, you know, most people have land to their, um, in their libraries. But if it's late game and you're searched out, he can probably win a game. Just by hitting someone, if nothing else. All right, here's one of the dual cards. Life and Death. Yeah, see? It's one card, or two cards on one card, if that makes sense. Life is interesting, but I don't care about making my lands creatures. Death, pay two, reanimate, lose life equal to the reanimated creature. Worthwhile. Rise from the Grave. It's a five drop reanimate that makes it a black zombie in addition. Yeah, and it doesn't have to be anyone's graveyard. Well, yeah. In a graveyard, not just yours. So, if someone put a really, really, really nice, scary creature in the graveyard... Hello, it's mine. Okay, next up, Narcomoeba. If for some reason I'm milling my own deck, which is possible, I can get this onto the battlefield for free. And if nothing else, it's a flyer, which can save my life, probably. Stinkweed Imp. It's in here for the dredge. Specifically, dredge 5. And on a 3-drop, that's not bad. The fact that when it deals combat damage to a creature, it destroys it, you know, that touch, makes it a blocker that's really decent, if nothing else. And when it dies, you know, taking out an opponent, you can dredge next turn. Alright. Victimize. It's a three drop that lets you reanimate two cards. All you have to do is sacrifice a creature. Yeah. Puts things in graveyard and gets more back. Love it. Deathbridge Chant. Okay, this one's a little interesting. 
it's a little bit more expensive than I like. Uh, Mana-wise, not money. Money-wise, it's not that expensive. Sure, when it, it mills immediately, which is good. Ten cards, very good. And, at the beginning of your upkeep, you basically get a card at random back. If it's a creature, you get it back to the field. Anything else, to your hand. Could be really useful, and if nothing else, it'll keep options available. Stitch together. Pay two. If you don't have threshold, it goes to your hand. If you have threshold, which is seven cards in the graveyard or more, it's just a two-drop reanimate spell with no downsides. Psychic Spiral. For that time when, you know, you have a lot of cards in your graveyard, but you don't have your win condition yet, and an opponent has, you know, more things in their library, switch it around a bit. Pay five, instant speed, and you can really ruin someone's day, especially if you have most of your library is now your graveyard. It's easy way to win the game, or just save yourself from being milled out when you don't have a win condition. Twilight's Call. It's a six drop, reanimate everything. And for two more, you can do it at instant speed. Again, this is a deck where it puts a lot of scary creatures in the graveyard, so you should have something to reanimate. It's very scary. Speaking of reanimate, Vigor Mortis. Pay two, reanimate. If green was spent, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. Having Ghoul Lich. A five drop, four, four. But, for one, you can cast target creature card from your graveyard this turn. And when you do, she becomes a copy of it. That's just so incredibly... Well, actually, it doesn't become a copy. It gains all activated abilities. Kind of like, um... The one other card I showed you that kept the abilities. But, yeah. It lets you reanimate. It gets you things that say you have to cast them. It'll give you those abilities if you go with those cards. I didn't, but this will let you use those. It's just so useful. And it's not that expensive either. If you find a copy, pick it up. <coughs> Corpse Connoisseur. A 5-drop 3-3 three, three that lets you put a creature card... Oh, yeah. From your graveyard, uh, library into your graveyard, and then shuffle. And when it dies, you can unearth it for four, put it up for a single turn before exile and a turn, and do that ability again. Living Death. Early game, it's a board wipe. Late game, it is mass reanimate over the entire field. And technically, still a board wipe for anything that was already up there. Good for those indestructible, hexproof guys who have a massive swarm army. Grave Troll. I think it's actually hovering around $6, but it's close enough where I'm going to say if you go to a good shop or online, it's probably under 5 so it counts still. Really, this one's here for the Dredge 6. I, I really don't care about the rest of it. The Dredge alone makes it worthwhile because it'll put 6 cards in the graveyard. Hermit Druid. Now, you haven't seen it, but I have a lot of non-basic lands in this deck. If I use him, I only use him a few times, and I have mass amounts of cards in my graveyard. Basically, it's pay green, tap, reveal until you get a basic land card put into play. Everything else goes to your graveyard. He's a two-drop. There's massive combos on him. For the last few cards, though, there's only four left. There's Jing Attacks. He's one of the more expensive ones, mana-wise and money-wise. He's a ten-drop at flash, and all other opponents become a hand size of zero, and at your end step, draw seven. So you draw out, and as long as you don't give yourself infinite uh, total hand size, you'll probably discard a bunch too. Mirror Mad Phantasm. Basically, he's a five drop, five one. So, nothing else. He's a flyer who can block. And, for two, colorless and a blue, he puts himself in, you shuffle your library, and reveal till you get him, put him up, and everything revealed ahead of him is in your graveyard. If he happens to be on your end, like the last card, you milled your entire library, and you can use a lot of abilities. And the final two cards, other than the lands, which I'm not going to show. Demonic Collusion and Laboratory Maniac. Laboratory Maniac, if you try and draw and you have no cards, instead of losing, you win. Demonic Collusion. Cheap card. Really cheap. Name a card for the one black instant speed card. And you reveal the top... Well, every card until you get that. All reveal cards are exiled. I like to name Black Lotus, get nothing, and exile my deck while Laboratory Maniac is out, and then I win the game whenever I draw. 
Alright, that's my deck. Hope you enjoy it. Later.